Now tuned into the greatest. The Run with Manny Wilson Podcast. The, the, the Run with Manny Wilson Podcast. The best sports podcast there is. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson. All the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers. The Run with Manny Wilson All the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers and headphones. I appreciate you tuning in to the first interactive sports podcast, you know, a community that makes sure your voice is heard. So if you hear something you agree with, you disagree with, you like, you dislike, or even if you just want to outsmart me on something I said, go ahead, shoot me a quick call, 219-413-9405. And of course, we'll play your take back on our next episode. Speaking of episodes, shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this episode. Get $20 off your first ticket purchase when you use the promo code the Run Podcast. Now, this code can only be applied for first-time users on the mobile app or website. So, I don't know about you, but hey, the fall is coming around and the baseball season. Them tickets are super cheap. So, get that $20 off. Go ahead, create an account and get it going. So, anyway, look, man, we joined by a special, 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 special guest today, man. Thomas Tariq from On The Hot Podcast is here with me today. What's going on with you, Thomas? How you feeling, man? Good, man. I'm glad to be back on your podcast, man. Thanks for having me on today. Of course, man. I'm glad to have you back because, you know, hey, it's a lot of stuff we got to discuss, bro. I mean, the season is right here. The season is it's coming to a start of the NFL season. It's a lot of excitement about different things. And I'm going to just get straight to it, bro. Um, one team in, in this particular conference over in the NFC, a couple different teams, actually, uh, we see they're in the same state. So I'm trying to just figure out who's the best in this state because you got one team who's they're making a lot of noise. Uh, they're, they're, you know, all in the media every day. They're trying to get contracts done. They signing people. People think they're going to the Super Bowl, apparently. I don't know. And then you got the other team over in Texas. They're just very quiet. They're very meticulous about it. They had some success last year, but now they on the road to redemption. They got young talent. They done added some talent, and ain't nobody saying the sound about them. So if you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Houston Texans and the Dallas Cowboys. And I got to know, bro, who's the best team in Texas right now? Who is that? Yeah, I got to say, as a Cowboys fan, I'm biased opinion. It is the Houston Texans. I feel like they are the best team in Texas. Okay. They went farther than us last year after being the second worst team in the league. They actually won a playoff game last year compared to us. Uh, but they got much better this offseason. You know, like you said, they block out the noise and they're ready to get going, uh, pick up where they left off last year. Meanwhile, us. Jerry Jones and company barking up for contracts, being in the media for the wrong reasons, the wrong mm -hmm. purpose. But the Texans, they they did have one hell of an offseason. They acquired Joe Mixon. They acquired Stephon Diggs and Daniil Hunter. That's going to be some key pieces to help this Houston Texans team go a long way this upcoming NFL season. So I Absolutely. think they're the best team in Texas for sure. Okay, all right. I'm glad you can at least admit it, bro. <laughs> if you can admit it, every other Cowboys fan should be able to admit that. Uh, but I am curious, though, because, I mean, I get on the Cowboys a lot, but I think, you know, above all, like, they they still have a chance to make something happen. And, I, I mean, I still say that division is up for grabs. I mean, because especially when the Giants is so bad right now, um, you definitely ain't got to worry about them at all. And then the Eagles are a team where, you know, they're kind of hit or miss. Last year we seen them start off really, really hot, and then all of a sudden they kind of just fell to the bottom of the map and didn't really get anything done. So um, in terms of Cowboys being able to secure that division again, do you think that's possible? Uh, I do think it's possible because, like you said, the Giants aren't going anywhere. I'm scratching my head about the Commanders. I don't think they'll be a threat. So I think it's going to be a two-team race between the Cowboys and Eagles. I do believe it's 50-50. Um, I just don't see them winning the division this year, only because I feel like history is going to play a part of it. Our mm. division, we haven't had a division winner back-to-back -back time since 2004, bro. Mm. It's, cra it's crazy stat, but I think the Eagles are going to take it this year mm. in our division. You know what? I really don't know who I would want to take it because Cowboys fans, I don't really like the Cowboys, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> Eagles is just as bad. <laughs> Eagles is just the bad. So, like, honestly, if <laughs> I know it's not happening, but if the Giants, <laughs> if the Giants somehow pulled it together and, oh, man, Daniel Jones, I doubt it. But 
<laughs> yeah, it would. It would. Come on, man. It, it would be crazy if that was to happen. But yeah, I think that would probably satisfy me most if I did witness that. But I'm um, going back yeah. to like the entire NFC though. I, it's a lot of competition. Things are heating up, um, and people are saying the comp is close to each other. So you got 49ers, Lions. Uh, I think the Atlanta Falcons is going to be good this year because they got a lot of new pieces, new quarterback in town and all of that stuff. So I'm um, out of all the teams in the NFC. Which one do you think is the best at the moment? Oh, uh, I got to go with the 49ers still only mm. because last year they basically beat all the contending teams uh, playoffs or regular season. They beat the Lions, the Packers, the Cowboys, the Eagles. They mm. beat all their te- all those teams. So right now they technically have these th- teams numbers right now. Uh, I still stay in the NFC. They got the best roster from top to bottom, offensively and defensively. So I'm going to say until proven otherwise, 49ers are still the best team in the NFC right now. Yeah, you know, I can't really disagree with that. Um, My heart is telling me that I think Detroit is probably the best team, but also I'm just still not sure because um, obviously, you know, they retain most of the talent they had, but I'm just not sure if – they still have enough receiving options um, and I want them to get at least one more solid receiver that can be picked up during a free agency but San Fran they've been the top dog they were top five in uh, passing they were top five in total yards as well so it's hard to kind of eliminate them from that top spot in the NFC there uh, but I do I, I am curious do you think we see something from Brock Purdy like I mean, he had a lot of controversy last year of, oh, Brock Purdy is that guy. He's not that guy. And he showed me, like, personally, I think Brock Purdy showed me in the playoffs that, all right, hey, he's got some skill. It's not fluke. It's not just Kyle Shanahan. So I do want to hear your thoughts on if we'll see a different type of season from Brock Purdy that sets him apart from the narratives of, oh, it's Kyle Shanahan doing the numbers right now. Yeah, I think he's going to have a similar season to what he had last year. Uh, Mm -hmm. And the MVP race, it's really a quarterback race now for the MVP award. But he was in the mix with guys like Lamar Jackson and Dak Prescott, not only because of his record, but what he was doing offensively to help the 49ers win ball games. So Mm -hmm. I think that he's cleared the narrative of being uh, a system quarterback or somebody that's just in Kyle Shanahan's offense like Jimmy Garoppolo was. But yeah, I Mm -hmm. think Brock Purdy's going to have one hell of a season. I think he's arrived and showed that last year. Mm, okay, yeah, that's facts. That's facts. I can agree with that, too. And be- I say he's going to have a good season because of what I seen in that Packers game, uh, because that was a that was a crazy game. Just kind of going back uh, to that playoff game between the Niners and the Packers. It was close uh, and, and it was just a great comeback win on the last drive. Uh, from the Packers, and it just it, it it changed my whole perspective on Brock Purdy. I'm like, I, I seen him play good, I seen him play bad, obviously, but I'm like, for him to show up in the clutch, that was huge. So, uh, anyway, look, let's move over to the AFC because AFC they got some dogs over here, and arguably the toughest division right now is that AFC North with the Steelers and all of that. Is it possible that we see um, some change in the AFC North pertaining to the Ravens winning that division again and the Ravens continuing to be top dogs in that division um, as we've seen last year? Do you think one of those other teams is going to show up? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think anybody really has a chance to win this division. I mean, they're Mm. all capable of it. It's the best division of football for a reason. I don't think the Ravens are actually going to win this division this year. I'm leaning towards the Bengals. Uh, Look, a healthy Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, he gets his deal done, and T. Higgins on the field. When they're all healthy, I'm I'm looking at this team, and I'm I'm looking at how they revamp their offensive line, their defense is underrated. I think they could give anybody in this division a run for their money. So give me a Joe Burrow healthy. I'll take him over any quarterback in this division for sure. Any quarterback, including Lamar Jackson? (laughs) Look, I got Lamar and Joe Burrow like neck and neck. I put Lamar, I will say I put Lamar over Joe Burrow over this only because the fact Joe Burrow has a history of being healthy okay. and things like that. But if they're both healthy on the field, give me Joe Burrow over Lamar Jackson. Okay. I'm I'm not completely mad at that. And that was a big reason why I was saying Lamar Jackson over Joe Burrow as well. But I mean, you're pretty much right about the Bengals, bro. This this division is a toss up here. It does not belong to any team in particular, just because I mean, both teams are evenly stacked. And I say both teams, meaning obviously Ravens, Bengals. Uh, But there's a team, too, that not many people have been talking about. And it's almost like their redemption year. Um, The Browns. Now, hey, they've been rough. But people sleep on the Browns 
and and they don't realize that they still have a top defense or defense in this conference and in the NFL. They I believe they were um, number one or at least top three the entire NFL uh, season last year. So they dominated and they still clearly only just needed a solid quarterback play in terms of making it work there. So with Deshaun Watson coming back uh, from all of his stuff, uh, finally he's keeping his hands to himself. Uh, what do you think it can be can be in the future for the Cleveland Browns here? Because they got the talent, but what do you think it can be in the future for them in this division? Can they win it? Uh, yeah, it's very winnable for sure. Mm. They got all the pieces offensively, defensively, especially when Nick Chubb comes back after the first four weeks of the season. It's really going to come down to Deshaun Watson playing well. If he could get back to how he used to play with the Houston Texans years ago. Uh, if mm. not, I don't see this team going far because he hasn't really shown that he is worth $230 million with this Browns team. Facts. So if he can show that and play well, I think the division, it, they could win this division for sure. They got the town and everything to do so. Yeah, so the thing, that, that's the thing, man. Look, with, with Deshaun Watson, I'm all in on, oh, I, I want to trust it. I want to trust, like, oh, he's a solid quarterback. We know what he can do. Like, I want to trust it. But the thing that makes this difficult for me in terms of trusting what Deshaun Watson can do is the fact that the man only played 12 games in two years. That's not a lot of football. That is, <laughs> that is not a lot of football <laughs> at all. I mean, that's and, and, and not even like 12 games in one season. It was six games in the past two seasons. So it, he hasn't really gotten a good rhythm. And coming into this upcoming season, I'm like, is he going to be able to be solid and be consistent and honestly be present for the team? Because they're going to need him. And if he's not there, I think that's all their chances. But um, obviously, we know they got a better chance than the Steelers. <laughs> I think it's safe <laughs> to kind of wipe the Steelers out the picture. But I do want to ask, because we're still in this division at the AFC North. Did they make the correct decision starting Russell Wilson over Justin Fields? I'm going to say they did, because really for this Pittsburgh Steelers team to be successful, all you really need is a quarterback that can actually move the ball down the field, put points on the board. Mm -hmm. Their team is going to, the Steelers going to stay afloat this year because they got a really good defense. They got Mike Tomlin, who refuses to have a losing season. So they got mm -hmm. everything really needed. I mean, they do got question marks on the offensive side of the ball, but you can win games with Russell Wilson. I think he puts them in a better position to win games and compete in that division. The compared to what Justin Fields can offer at this particular time. Yeah, and I, I do agree with that. That was part of the reason, too, I, I thought this was the correct decision. And I was also thinking, like, long-term down the season. I don't think any quarterback is going to be the franchise quarterback for the Steelers. Um, But I'm like, you know, say Russ does come out and he's playing bad, he's playing awful. At least you got a younger guy in Justin Fields who's, like, going to be able to come off the, the bench with an edge on his shoulder. Like, he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. Like, hey, I was sitting on a bench and I'm a starter, so let me come out and I can play harder. Like, you you know, I, I think he just will come off the bench with a little more fire than would Russell Wilson, someone who's won a Super Bowl and already established himself in the league, would like come off the bench and like try and prove himself. So that was like part of my reason for that. Um, but yeah. above all, you know, I, I still think their season is going to be destructive. <laughs> it's it's going to be rough, man. I, I don't think they'll really have a, a great season um, this year, but – 